Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Um, today we will talk about um, a device which is called inductor in uh, alternating current circuit. Well, this lecture is part of the course called Physics 14 presented on Unizor.com. There is a prerequisite course on the same website called Math 14, so I do recommend you to take it first, or at least be familiar with all the concepts which are in that course. Now, um, I do recommend you actually to watch this lecture from the website rather than from, let's say, YouTube or wherever you found it, um, because the website contains, well, logical, uh, logically arranged uh, lectures. There are um, there is a menu, uh, and you can basically um, have the whole course in front of you. And um, there are many problems solved, and uh, and there are text uh, notes for each lecture, which is very important because after you watch the lecture, I do recommend you usually to to read the text uh, um, which uh, which accompanies. Uh, it's like a textbook basically. And uh, for those who prefer some challenge, there are exams. Um, you don't have to even sign in, it's completely anonymous. Or if you want, obviously you're welcome. Um, there are no ads, no financial strings attached, so I do recommend you to use the site. Okay, so let me first explain um, one particular experiment, which I believe is very important and it kind of demonstrates the concept which I would like to uh, explain right now. So, let's consider you have a circuit uh, with AC which includes the following. Um, it includes some kind of a consumer of electricity, like a lamp. And it also has Um, let's say it's a solenoid, for instance. Well, in any case, it's any kind of a wire which is looped around something. Um, so, basically this device, we will use the term inductor. So it's a wire um, wound in a loop or, or in the form of a solenoid, doesn't really matter. As long as there are loops, um, there might or might not be core around which um, everything is um, wound. So, this is um, AC. This is AC. It has certain voltage. And as it is um, uh, pictured right now, well, considering this is not a very heavy um, reel of wire. Let's say it's a solenoid which with, I don't know, 20, 30 different loops around something. Um, the lamp will probably um, light up as, as, as usually, like a normal, uh, whatever it's supposed to be uh, lit up. Now, let me do the following. Let's say I have some kind of a iron um, core which I can insert into this solenoid, into this inductor. Let's call it inductor, more general. Well, what happens? Well, all of a sudden you will see that the lamp is just going down, 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 the brightness of the lamp. And the more I insert this core inside the solenoid, the less light I will have from the lamp. Just remember this particular experiment because that's exactly what, what I'm going to explain um, uh, and uh, it actually demonstrates what, what I will explain from the theoretical standpoint. So whenever we are inserting um, iron core into the solenoid, something is happening which is kind of equivalent of growing resistance of this particular part of the circuit, because what else can actually reduce the voltage of the lamp? Well, resistance, some kind of a resistance. But it's not a resistor, it's just a wire bound in a loop, in many loops, let's say. And um, also uh, this iron 
core is very important in this particular case. Okay, so being as it may, just remember this particular picture. I will wipe it out. And I will continue next. Okay, next I would like to um, make sure that you remember the concept of self-induction. Self-induction is the key to understanding this particular lecture. Um, now, self-induction and Faraday's law were explained previously. Well, by the way, that's why you need to watch this lecture on Unizor, because now you have to really go to a previous one of the previous lectures, so you need the menu, find the lecture, and, and go to this particular lecture. Okay, so self-induction, and it's based on a very um, simple um, concept. Whenever, if you have some kind of a loop, let's say, whenever there is a magnetic uh, field changing, uh, which goes through this particular loop, there is an EMF, electromotive force, generated. So, there is always magnetic field around any kind of a current. So, if you have just a plain current and have, and have a direct current in it, even direct current, you will always have magnetic field around it. Now, if you have it in a loop, and you have a direct current here, from a battery, let's say. Obviously, you will have magnetic field, which basically goes inside this loop, and then outside and around, right? If you have more than one loop, if you have something like a solenoid, and the ma magnetic field would go like inside and outside, inside and outside, one of them would be equivalent to the north, another will be equivalent to the south. Because it's really, if it's a direct line, uh, direct, um, direct current. So this is basic, basically behaves like a magnet. So you know that. So if you have a current, it generates the magnetic field. Now let's go in reverse. What if you have a magnetic field? Well, if magnetic field is changing, only if it's changing, there are no sources of energy, no battery, no anything. But if you have a magnetic field changing, which goes through this particular loop, it will generate EMF. It will generate uh, electromotive force, and electric current will go. Depending on the direction of the magnetic field change, the direction of the current will be here and there, one, one side or another side. Okay? Now, what if this is... Um, uh, AC, alternating current. Well, now let's think about this. If this is alternating current, since it's a current, it creates its own magnetic field. But since it's alternating, so it goes this way and that way, this way and that way. When it goes this way, magnetic field inside this loop goes in one direction when electric current goes in the opposite direction, magnetic field would be in opposite direction. So magnetic field is always changing. So not only you have a magnetic field which is generated by the original AC, but also we have a magnetic field induced by the fact that the first original magnetic field is changing. So you have self-induction, that's what it is, self-induction. You have additional EMF. So you have one EMF which is created by the source, original source of um, AC, of alternating current, and then you have an EM EMF induced by the fact that this magnetic field is changing. And a induced um, uh, EMF, the self-inducted, so to speak, uh, EMF, is always against the original one. It tries to basically uh, move to the opposite direction, move electrons to the opposite direction. So, whenever the field, for instance, goes into this way, then the electromotive uh, uh, forces the electrons to go this way. The electromotive force, which, which is related to self-induction, tries to, to go to the opposite way. So, it's always working against it. When this thing is increasing, original one, the uh, 
uh, the, the self-inducted EMF is trying to reduce the speed of this um, increase. If this EMF, original EMF, is, is reducing, then the EMF which is generated through self-induction is trying to support it. So this is the concept of a self-induction. It's very important. Again, remember it. It will be used. This is just a repetition of whatever it was before. Next. Okay. What we will do next is go to some kind of a theory. So there is a Faraday's law which basically tells us that EMF um, generated by in a loop by um, variable magnetic flux is basically a rate of change this of this magnetic flux. So this again was in one of the previous lectures. It's about the Faraday's law. This is a very important formula. Now, this is a self-inducted EMF generated by changing um, magnetic field. Now, it's time to go into inductors in the AC current. Um, inductor is basically, as I was explaining before, it's just a wire wound in multiple loops. Solenoid is just one of the example, or you may just have a reel of a reel. I mean, this reel, reel uh, of wire, like this. So you have two ends, and this is also in an in inductor. Now, this inductor creates magnetic field if there is a current going through it. Obviously, if the current is AC then the magnetic field is also changing all the time together with this original AC. Um, now, the magnetic field uh, created by, uh, by the wire is proportional to um, current which is running in the wire. So, even in a simple case of direct current, straight line, and magnetic field around it, the uh, intensity of the magnetic field B depends on its proportional actually to uh, the um, electric current going through the wire. So, what is happening with electric current here, okay, in case we have um, this inductor? Well, if it's connected to uh, alternating current, my um, original uh, original EMF is uh, pulsating. It's like sinusoidal change. It's some kind of a maximum times sine of omega t, right? Now, obviously, my original Um, current in this particular uh, circuit is also from the plain Ohm's law. It's exactly the same. So let's just consider that we have, we don't really need this right now, we have this. Now from this follows that since my intensity of the magnetic field proportional to um, current and my flux which is basically the product of intensity times the area uh, of the loop intensity of the field which goes through it and intensity this is magnetic flux intensity this is the area B is proportional to I I is changing whatever it is it's changing as a function of T well, by the way, I forgot to mention, omega is just uh, an angular velocity. Whenever my AC generated, there is an angular velocity of the rotor. So that's where omega comes from. Again, it's all explained before in one of the previous lectures. So from this follows 
that magnetic flux which goes through this reel is actually proportional to uh, the current which goes through the wire. Now, this is a function of t, of time. So this one also is function of t. Now, L is a proportionality which basically depends on this particular inductor. For instance, if you have two wires, uh, two loops of wire uh, instead of one, you will have uh, double L because the magnetic f uh, flux would be twice as big, right? Well, it also depends on geometric shape not only on the, on the number of loops, but also the geometric shape, how big the radius of this loop is. And what's also very important, whether there is, or there is nothing inside this inductor. Now, let me go back to the experiment which we did in the very beginning. When I was inserting the iron rod into the solenoid, it looked like our resistance of the whole circuit was, was growing. Why was it? Well, here is why. I will explain that everything depends actually on this inductness, this coefficient of, pro of proportionality is called inductness of this, uh, of this inductor. So if I have an iron rod inside the solenoid, magnetic field concentrates inside. It's not really dissipated all the way around it, but the um, uh, the iron rod actually concentrates the magnetic field. It's easier for a magnetic field to go inside the iron than in, in the vacuum or air or anything. So the whole energy goes through the iron. That's why the inductness of inductance of this um, inductor is growing, it's bigger, it's more energy magnetic field energy accumulated through it. And that's very important for something which we will actually come up as with a resistance of this inductor. Now, let me talk about resistance. Okay, so let me go from here. We know that variable magnetic field, variable flux actually, creates a uh, self-induction EMF and it's going against the original EMF. Now, let's just talk about this, what happens here. Well, we know that I of t, this is the current as a function of time, is this. Alright? So, my flux is equal to L times I max times sine omega t. Now let's talk about self-induction. So as we know, variable, and this is variable, magnetic field flux creates um, the EMF, generates, induces EMF, which basically prevents, well, it, it works against the original EMF. So let's just calculate what it is. coefficient pr pr proportionality, this as well. Now, uh, derivative of sine is a cosine, and then we have to do derivative of, der derivative of in inner function, which is omega times t, derivative is omega. So that's my derivative. So my E of self-induction, I put ii, is induced EMF, is equal to L times minus minus L times I max times omega times cosine omega t. Now from trigonometry we know that we can actually replace this with a sine of omega t plus t, t over 2. Again, if somebody forgot trigonometric identity, 
There is a prerequisite course in unisor.com, Mass for Teens, and there is a very good uh, trigonometry uh, chapter. So this is an induced EMF which works against the original one. Now, let's go back to the original experiment when our lamp was actually going down when I insert the iron rod. When I insert the iron rod, the inductance L of the solenoid was increasing because of magnetic properties of iron. And since it was increasing, my induced self-induction self is also increasing in absolute value, but since it's a minus, it prevents, it goes against the original EMF. So basically it's reducing the original EMF as any resistor. So basically inductor works against the alternating current EMF like basically like, like a resistor so that's very that's very important that's why whenever we are inserting iron rod into the solenoid in the AC circuit the resistance so to speak resistance of the inductor was actually growing and so much that our lamp which was in the circuit actually was getting less EMF less voltage so it, 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 it lights actually much less. Okay, now where are we? What's important here is that this induced EMF is also sinusoidal, but you see this plus pi over 2? Whenever you have a function and another function which has argument shifted by plus pi over 2, it means that the whole graph is shifted to the left by pi over 2, which, was, which also was explained in the Mass for Teens uh, prerequisite course. Any function, whenever you have a function f of x and then you have f of x plus a in parentheses, it's shifted by a to the left. Very easy to prove, by the way. So, it looks like this induced EMF is shifted uh, the sinusoid actually is shifted relative to uh, relative to the uh, current. So if the current is plain sign, my um, uh, induced EMF would be shifted by pi over two, like this. No, not like this. Sorry. This is pi. I need pi over two. Go like this. So if this is I, this is E. So it shifted to the left by pi over 2. So uh, alternating current I and generated uh, self induction are actually going with a pi over 2 shift, which is called a phase shift um, from each other. Okay, um, now what's interesting is that in, in absolute values I can always call this as Emax. So Emax So, Emax, this is the maximum, the peak value of um, EMF. It's equal to I max, well, in absolute value I want, times L times omega. I just want to ignore this minus, that's why I put uh, absolute value. Now, what's important is this thing. Sometimes they're using x with the L um, index to signify this value. It, you, you see, it, it, it actually behaves like a resistance. 
Remember the Ohm's law when you have the voltage is equal to current times resistor, res resistance. So this is actually logically equivalent to resistance. And that's very important actually because our um, original experiment was actually demonstrating that it behaves, this inductor behaves like a, like a resistor and the more induct inductance of this uh, inductor is, the greater the resistance. Omega is kind of a constant. Whenever you're inserting the iron rod, you're increasing the um, uh, inductance of this inductor. So this is kind of an equivalence of the Ohm's law for, um, for AC, for alternating current chain, with XL playing the same kind of a logical role as a resistance in case if it's a real resistor in the, in the, in, in the circuit. Okay, now let's talk about units of measurement. That's very important actually. Let's just talk about this particular thing. What are the units of this? Well, the inductance is basically seen from here. So what is on the left? Volt. Induct inductance is measured in units called Henry, HR. Um, uh, current is measured in amperes. Omega is angular speed. Angular speed means radians per second. Well, radians is a scalar, so you have one over a second here. Sine is just a scalar. It doesn't have any kind of uh, measurement. So from here, basically, one Henry as a unit of measurement of inductance is equal to one volt times one second divided by one ampere. So this is measurement of the inductance L, Henry. <coughs> now, we were talking about L times omega as just another uh, kind of a letter we used, and we call this inductive reactance, <laughs> many terms. Doesn't matter how it's called, induct in, 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 induct inductive uh, reactants. So that's why we have um, this particular one letter with an index um, abbreviation to basically signify and we were talking about this thing behaving like like a uh, resistance like, like a res resistance of some kind of a resistor. Well it's called uh, basically um, reactive resistance to differentiate it from uh, active resistance of real resistors. Now, let's think about what kind of units of measurements uh, we have here. Well, the unit of measurement is L times omega. Omega is 1 over second, right? So the multiplication uh, of uh, uh, Henry, and this is 1 over second, would be Henry per second, right? one Henry per one second. And what is this? If you will divide second to here, it will be volt times ampere. What is volt divided by divided? Volt divided by ampere. What is volt divided by ampere? One volt divided by one ampere is one ohm. Remember? That's the Ohm's law. So the reacting, r reactive, reactive or inductive res resistance, whatever, uh, is measured in ohms, the same units as the real uh, resistance, the active resistance which we have. So active resistance is measured in ohms and reactive resistance also measure, measures, is measured in ohms. So that actually makes this thing really behaves like a resistance. And that's why they call it reactive resistance. 
So any kind of an inductor, when it's in AC circuit, demonstrates certain qualities like a resistor. But again, it's just a completely different device. It, it's, it's not the one which just slows down the electrons because they have some physical resistance. This is a device which basically slows electrons because it generates the electromotive force which works against changing of the flux which goes through this uh, inductor. I understand that it's my, may, may be a little difficult concept, but in any case, it is what it is. We just have to learn uh, whatever the, the, the nature actually presents to us. And that's what it presents to us, but very important property. Again, it's all based on Faraday's law, when the changing magnetic flux is generating EMF, which is working against the original EMF, which produced this um, magnetic flux. So, what else I missed? Okay, um, I think what's important is to emphasize the difference in phase. So, this particular um, EMF, which is generated by um, uh, a, a AC going through the inductor, is shifted by pi over 2 relative to original current which circulates inside the circuit. Um, that's basically it. I, I do recommend you to um, read, the com uh, read the text which is accompanying this particular lecture on unisor.com. You just have to go to physics 14 on unisor.com, choose electromagnetism, uh, and within alternating current chapter you will find the lecture about inductors, AC inductors. Before that, there was AC conductors, no, not conductors, capacitors, sorry. Um, and um, capacitors also behave like um, inductors. They do have certain, again, reactive resistance. Uh, and there was another formula uh, for X with the index C for capacitors introduced in that lecture. And it was also a shift in phase whenever you go uh, through a, a capacitor in the uh, AC circuit. So both capacitor and inductors behaves like resistors, but they also shift the, um, uh, the EMF. One shifts into one direction and another to another direction. Anyway, read the text. Text is probably a little bit uh, more Mm, I don't know, logical, theoretical, than whatever I'm trying to explain here, because it's a lot of different material here in one, in one lump sum. So, read the text, and good luck.